teacher in grade one, she was Shamali Madam, and I really, really loved her. Even now I love her and respect her because when I came to school, uh, actually I didn't have, like, it was the first time I'm learning all the Sinhala letters and it was the first time because I went to an English Montessori and all. So she made everything in me, like I didn't, it was, the, it was her who gave everything to me, so I really, really respect her. And when I talk about the friends, uh, surprisingly, the friends I had in grade one are still my friends, like we continue to be together since grade 30. So. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Chamiti, Tashia, Vinuki, Vaika, Tiruni and Sasindi. Um, I actually started off uh, in grade four, I guess, four, three. I guess uh, I think it was because of my parents they were always like don't focus only on studies just whatever you want to do just do it just when when I said that I want to do the uh, participate in drama they were like yeah go we'll come to pick you up what time should I come that was their response so I think they were a main driving force in my life to start all of this I do remember that I was in grade four and I acted as a duckling <laughs> and yeah it was pretty good because we won the first place at all uh, all island level and I enjoyed it very much I did like we practiced the drama for an almost an year so it was so nice the first time I got on stage and did a drama Actually, it was in grade five. Uh, we had this um, drill display, and the karate coach came. And we karate was not in our school those days. And then he came and did a drill display with us. It was just a very small drill display, and that was the first time I did karate. It was not professional karate. We just did it. But uh, after that, I actually kind of liked it and then just started it off. I did chess before that. It was just, card was just, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to check it out, kind of. And then Sir just identified that I was good and he kept calling me and saying me, come, come, come. And then I actually loved it. He's coaching Shotokan, uh, but I, I think I have a passion towards it because it's like it awakes your strength and as well as it's fast and all of it. So even now, if you, if I if I get a chance to choose between the styles, I still pick Shotokan. Yeah. Uh, karate. Um, when I start with school, it was a new sport. Like we were the first batch to start karate in school. And when I look back, uh, it was like no one even knew what karate was back in the time because they never like actually saw the achievements. It was the first time for everyone. But now it's like we've got our own room, karate room, and everyone knows when they call it like karate, they all recognize us because I think we've done a great job until this point uh, for that. Our coach was a very good, like he was a very uh, responsible person in the sense like he came even at five o'clock he comes and practices and he's very dedicated and uh, so was the karate team. So with that the karate team, the coach, parents and myself, we all work together for the upliftment of this. Actually, uh, I had a, uh, another competition. It was uh, the Hampasa competition or something like that. I had it in the same day. So I did it and then came to the karate meet and uh, I was in a rush. I, was, I changed inside my uh, vehicle, like, vehicle and just came out. 
I was so excited. I, I, I it was the first time, and I was late. And uh, I remember that we have to remove all our earrings and all, and I didn't remove it because I didn't know about it. And then when I was going to start it, they called me off, and they were like, "You should remove all these." And I was like, 100% excited, and I was super nervous. I got a best eight in the first tournament. I didn't get any plays, but yeah, that's my first tournament. Even though I didn't get a place, uh, Sir was like, I performed really well. Like, since it's the first meet, we ha I had so much pressure, like, it's the first time facing this, even though I practiced for one year. So after that, I think after the meet, I improved quite a lot because I've seen, I, at the meet, I saw people performing karate and that actually, like, it was a boost for me. Like, I saw what it was actually like. Like, I saw people who were talented than me and they were a role model for me. So that meet actually made me uh, grow strong and stronger. And in grade six, in the uh, grade seven, I got a second place in the All Island, so that was my first All Island meet. And from that day onwards, it was always experience. Like I see new people, I see new techniques, and that's how I improved. Yeah. Tough. I consider everything was tough. Like even the. Like, even the district meet, even though I am a national karate player, even the district meet, I'm still stressed. Even though I'm experienced, I still feel stressed because always my goal was to do the best. Like, not only the gold medal, like, even though I got the gold medal, sometimes I'm like, no, I didn't do my best. I always wanted to do 100% so that I won't have any regrets. Even though I get the silver medal or bronze medal, I won't have any regrets if that was my maximum talent. So. It was always tough. I always uh, like try to give out my best and not to disappoint myself and everyone. So it was always tough. Best achievement is uh, the gold medal in South Asian. Uh, karate Championship. Yeah, that was the best achievement. Uh, actually, it was the second time I represented Sri Lanka, uh, but uh, the first time it was in Malaysia and it was uh, not South Asian. So, South Asians had a different vibe. You know, we all had the uh, Sri Lankan jersey on with the Sri Lankan flag and we went uh, with the Sri Lankan flag, we went behind the Sri Lankan flag into the meet. And uh, when we played, we had the Sri Lankan flag in a, in a, a karate kit and uh, the, we had several rounds and the last round was the most memorable for me because it was like the entire stadium was normally they have like a few uh, places to have the uh, tournaments but the last round it was won and everyone was watching me so it was the only competition at the time. So it was so nice because I could hear, I could hear everyone cheering Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka when I was doing it and it was like I couldn't remember anything but that just Sri Lanka thing went on drumming in my ear and that was so nice and when I got the first place, when they announced that I was the first and when I got on and put the gold medal with the Sri Lankan flag, it was such a nice experience. Um, mental preparation is like I normally I don't look at the opponent very much because sometimes if the opponent is if I know the opponent and if if she's stronger if I know that she's stronger than me in the previous fights I would be like oh my god how am I going to do this and if she's not stronger if I've, I, I have defeated her before then I would be like ah, I can do this so both are not good so I don't normally look at her before the fight I just go with a clear mind I just try to do my best so that would give the result by the way.
Yeah, uh, so we started it in grade uh, in 2011, so it's just nine years. Uh, but actually last year we, we got the championship, high school got the championship, I was a team captain and I think that was a great achievement for us all because even though I participated in a lot of stuff individually, as a team we developed very like in a very uh, increasing amount last year because we got the championship. So we are pretty strong these days. Commonwealth, I was in grade 12 when I went for the Commonwealth Games. It was in South Africa and it was actually, uh, even though I didn't get a place in the meet, it was a very tough game. Like there I saw people all around the world, like it was not only the South Asian countries, it was like uh, Japan and we had almost like every, like all the celebrity people were there and uh, it was uh, like for us we were like we are like in the karate field we are very very junior people when we consider the other people so it was like a dream come true like we could talk with them we could see their performances it was just not a video we actually saw it so uh, I participated in three rounds in the uh, Commonwealth Games before I got knocked off but until that round it was very tense but it had like a lot of experiences than any other meet because the tactics the way they presented themselves the way they even way they the way they actually uh, held themselves in the meet how they uh, managed to like have a, the good aura I don't know it was all different it was a very different experience even from the, like it was even better than South Asian meet but I really hope that I could get a medal in that but I unfortunately I couldn't but I don't regret it. I think that was that. That's just another lesson in my life. Uh, the truth is, uh, the size was a ne never a problem. Like never ever. Like I don't know in karate, the size doesn't matter. It's just the technique and the way you present the technique. It's all that matters. If you actually, if you're actually talented, the the like the theory of karate is, whoever you are, the the size, the strength you have, your, your, your fat or thin, that doesn't matter. It's just a technique. That's what we actually master. Because as human beings, all of us have fighting instincts. Like that's what we are. We we all can fight in one way. But in karate, we specialize how to fight, like. Putting the least effort through techniques. That's what we master. So size was never a problem. I think it was techniques, not techniques in sense comparatively. It's always a comparison. So at the meet, if I ever lose, it was either comparatively my techniques were not good as the opponent, either it was the mental state. It depends, like it uh, clearly affects the meet. Uh, actually, uh, normally we spend like one week in that country when we talk about the when we go on a meet. So when we talk about the Sri Lankan team, we normally become family at the end because there we don't have anyone else. We don't have our parents. It's just them. So the seniors look after the juniors, and we are like uh, normal. I was a junior in both the times. So we were always helped by them. They always took care of us and they, we were never alone, not for one single second. We were always together and we were always the Sri Lankan team. We were so strong because our spirit was so strong and wearing the Sri Lankan flag in uh, <coughs> the jersey and in the karate kit, it was so amazing. Like you're representing Sri Lanka uh, in behalf of like in the like in Commonwealth Games in South Asian Games like you are like you like, everyone sees you representing Sri Lanka so it's like so nice the experience is so amazing uh, 
especially karate i don't know i think karate made me who i am today when i talk about all the other extracurricular activities i was able to compete in them i was able to go in front and do all of their stuff because i did karate because karate is not merely a sport it just makes up your personality it makes a different you because it when you actually love karate and so if you actually love karate that doesn't mean that that means that you're not only doing karate for the sake of a sport that means you live in the world of karate like it's a, it's amazing and it's wonderful because it just awakens something inside you that you've never seen before like the concentration all of it it's just not fighting karate is not fighting it's just a meditation uh, it's just a life lesson sort of everything has a lot of meanings in it so actually karate made me who i am today and when i talk about all the other stuff it's uh, I am I stand tall today because of it. It's not just because of studies. I don't think just studying the book like the textbook and just it would have made me who I am today. So I start with drama because I started it way before debating. Actually drama is uh, the stage is a place where you can be very different. Like it's so free and that's like the most comfortable place to be honestly speaking because no one would judge you it's just you're playing the character and when you play the character and when you are on stage with the costumes with the lighting with all of it when you just act on your character the feeling you get is so good and when you actually act it like if you do your best in the drama you feel like you've achieved the world like when you're in front of the stage like on top of the stage and when you when you see like the entire main hall filled with people it's like excitement and yeah that's it in drama and i, I actually love drama like i would love to do drama even after school like it's it's kind of a dream for me and uh, then when you talk about debating debating actually i didn't do it until i was in grade 11 10 11 I didn't know that I was good at good at it because it's kind of like you have to speak on spot you have to make make up all the stuff on spot so I was not very confident about it but then uh there was this teacher Sumududan Miss Sumudmisi Sumudan Pala she was like one day in the uh, the first time I actually did debating was uh, at Land Raw <laughs> uh, it was it's a huge competition and it, it was my first time and that teacher had so much faith on me because i was not confident myself but she was like no you can do this and i was the first speaker so i had to do two twice like i have to speak twice and it was a very like a huge uh, pressure on me but the moment i started speaking it's like you get all the attention from the crowd and everyone is listening to you and when everyone gets what you're talking about that like i can prove something i can prove what i can be i believe that is so nice so that uh, i i actually liked it because it's logic and i like logical speaking so when i when i did debating it was like i can prove something right yeah No. <laughs> no, I've never had stage fright because uh, in grade 2 I started I that was the first time I actually got on stage. And that day even that day I didn't have stage fear. I I'm, I'm not afraid of the stage. I actually love the stage like <laughs> there were any embarrassing moments. I was scared on the first day because the the opponent team which was uh, Hillwood I guess and they were like very experienced debaters and I was like oh my god what should I do I was like that but uh drama and all uh, embarrassing the character sometimes it was embarrassing sometimes uh yeah otherwise there weren't any embarrassing stuff uh I actually enjoy stage performance like any stage performance it I this drama singing music anything I I enjoy stage performances Burning the bridge that keeps us I 
Okay, that's a very common question <laughs> coming for me. Uh, for that, I don't know. Uh, uh, so uh, even when I came to the class, I uh, came after morning practices. It was after 7:30. I was rushing to the class. Then after intervals, I had to go for drum practices. Then for debating and all of that. And we had this gang, like our gang. Whenever in the class, we were always out doing all the house stuff and all of that. So. I was not this kid in the class, obviously. Okay, so uh, the point is that I actually love, like studying. I actually love studying. Uh, when you talk about the subject, subjects, the subjects I chose for levels, I actually enjoyed learning it. I actually enjoyed it. None of this stuff, like starting from drama, debating karate, I never did it because someone forced me to do it. I loved it. I chose them. I chose to do it. So I didn't want to drop any of them. So I managed to do. I managed to uh, like do everything, complete everything. So yeah, that's why I didn't want to drop anything off. That's why because I could manage everything. Okay, uh, classes because of losing classes. Uh, no, not much because after you know, all the teachers knew that. I covered it up so no one actually teachers were very helpful whenever I went to them and said madam I didn't get it can I learn it again they were like okay this is my free period come everyone was helpful starting from grade one all the teachers I had they were very understanding they were never like stop this stop that ne they never said it that's why I respect my school and my teachers so much they always got that I, I, I would do this no matter what so they always helped me like whenever I needed it they were there whenever I gave a paper and said madam can you check it for me they were there so parents they were always there from the very beginning they were always there even like uh, in very tough decisions like when when I when I started karate it's obviously like I'm a girl and uh, it's the first time in karate for the school as well so it's actually uh, what challenging for me to take the decision but actually they never questioned me like they were they were never like why are you even doing this and they never even asked it they were like you want to do it okay let's do it like even now, even at this moment, they don't pressurize me on anything. They just understand me, they just know who I am. I think that's the most important thing in parenting, like knowing your child, what your child is. They knew me perfectly. Until this moment, they know who I am. So actually, they know what I can do and what I can't do. So they know that I wouldn't go on with the studies if I drop all the stuff. So they were like, yeah, you can balance both. I, we know you can, so let's balance it. And when there were like very tough uh, moments where like uh, in the, when I was uh, planning on whether to ask for committee or not, that was a very tough decision because it's A-levels, I'm doing biology and committee is a lot of work and all of that. They were like, when I took the decision that I'm asking for committee, never, never, up until now, they've never said, why did you ask for committee? Every time I'm stuck with stuff, like, I'm like, all stuffed up, they're like, okay, fine, just calm down. If you're tired, just sleep, just have your rest. They were always like that. Up until this moment, they've never asked me, why did you do this? We've never asked you to do, do this. Uh, when I take the decision, they always supported it. They never said you, you took the wrong decision. Like they never questioned me in that way. Yeah, so they did a great job in parenting. I think I, I, would, I, I owe them more than like, I would never repay them in my entire life. Uh, when I talk about the school, actually starting from Madam Principal, the entire staff, just as, just as I said before, not only the people, or only the teachers who taught me, not only the subject teachers, everyone, everyone I've met since grade one, they loved me and they helped me in every way they can. So, everyone in this school helped me in every way they can. 
So uh, when I talk about the school, I think the high school actually made me who I am because the personality and all of that, it doesn't, you can't gain it through subjects or anything. So the opportunities it gave me, the, uh, the background it made in my life, I think it made me very different. I, I, I'm so confident, I'm, I'm so, I don't know, I, I, I don't hesitate much. That's all because of high school. I think high school is a, a place where they make kids like into marvelous human beings because it's not just restricted to studies, it just gives you thousands and thousands of experiences. Like it's so nice. I love the school. Uh, actually, when I talk about karate, I don't think I can ever give up it. Like, even though I wouldn't be able to participate in if there is any like obstacle, if even if I drop the tournaments and all, long time back <laughs> forward, like uh, even if I drop them, I don't think I would drop practicing karate. Because as I said before, it's not just about the tournaments. It's just, it just relaxes you and all of that. So I would never drop practicing karate. Karate will always be in my life. Because it's like, in, since grade three, I, four, I started it. So I can't drop it. It's, a, it's kind of impossible. And when I talk about drama and all, I, I really love to do, I really love to participate in a professional drama, you know, in a professional drama. I want to do it, but I don't know whether I would be able to do it, but it's a kind of a dream. And yeah, since I'm doing bioscience, I hope that I would get to the medical faculty. I hope. We will see after the results and after all of it. Uh, what I see in the future is I just, I'm not hoping much. I don't have, you know, uh, big dreams. I just want to be myself. I just don't want to regret. I just don't want to be someone else's model or what others want me to be. Okay, so yeah, my dream is to actually be myself because I don't want anyone's, I don't want to be someone others expect me to be. I just want to enjoy life. I, don't, I just want to be myself and be comfortable in whatever I'm doing. So that's my dream, to actually look back and be like, yes, this is what I wanted to be. This is me and me alone, not anyone else. Okay, uh, what I want to say is, uh, first of all, I think everyone should know who you are. Like, that's, I think that's the way to success or whatever you call it is. Because if you don't know who you are, you would never know what to do and when to do it. So first you should know actually who you are and who you want to be and what are your talents, what are your uh, uh, cans and cons. So if you actually know what you can do and if, you're, if you actually know what you're actually passionate about, then you would never fail because that's what you want to do. So you should always be very straightforward with what you want to be. It can be either science, music, anything. It, it can't have any limits. As long as you love it, as long as you can do it, as long as you are talented in it, I don't think anyone can say it's bad or good because it's your talent, it's your success. So the first thing I want to say is never ever take decisions on behalf of others. Just know who you are and take the decision according to who you are not because of other people or not because of others' opinions. Because if you do it like that, one day you will fail because that's not what you're supposed to be in this world. So I really, really believe it because uh, as far as I know, I achieved all of this because I actually knew who I was or else I wouldn't do any of this. So if you actually want to achieve in life, just first one is just know who you are. And the second one is just don't back off like you would have thousands and thousands and thousands of obstacles in life it would be like a very um, 
I don't know, you might actually feel like you have to give up. You want to give up. I can't do this anymore. You will feel it. I'm pretty sure because I felt it like thousand times. But if you actually give up, that's the moment you fail. If you fail but try again and again and again, one day you will actually win. And the win is not just, I don't call win for actually getting a gold medal or getting a first place or anything like that. It's just achieving the maximum of yourself. If you are good at music, then go to the maximum of it. If you are good at anything, just go to the maximum of yourself. That's called winning. And until you win yourself, until you are actually uh, satisfied with your own self, don't stop. Don't just fall down or back off. And the other thing is just uh, try to compete within yourself, not others. Just uh, don't try to actually be someone uh, you see, just try to be yourself. Because the more you compete with yourself, you will not have a limit. Like if you, if you compete with another person, you will stop at the point where you reach the other person's level. But if you're actually competing with yourself, you will never stop. You will always feel, no, I can do more, I can do more. So I think that's the best messages I can give. The first one is identify yourself. The second one is don't stop or back off until you actually achieve what you are. And the third one is try competing with yourself, not with others. You are your opponent, not others. That's it. Good morning, Bihara. Sorry. Good morning, uh, uh, Irudi. Uh, 